Uh, this company, like you said, is building humanoid robots. And the idea here is to address labor shortages in the labor market at some point. I see a red apple on a plate in the center of the table. The last 30 days in the world of AI have just been crazy. OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT, has unveiled a new artificial intelligence model that takes written prompts and a video in a matter of seconds. First, we saw OpenAI Sora that can create ultra-realistic videos with just a single prompt which will not only impact the work of models, videographers, and ad makers, but also lead to the rise of fake AI videos called deepfakes. Explicit AI-generated images of Taylor Swift began to circulate on X, formerly known as Twitter. We are alarmed by uh, the reports of the, of the circulation of images that you just laid out. Then we saw the world's first AI software engineer, Devin, which created havoc among software engineering students all across the internet. But none of these things match the latest robot reveal by OpenAI. Now I know that there's a lot of fear amongst people, but the truth is, it is too early to decide what jobs will stay and what will be replaced. But there is a specific list of nine extremely important skills that we all must learn to keep ourselves relevant in the post-AI world. Now let's take a step back and let's think about something. All of these individual AI tools like ChatGPT, Sora, Devon can now be packed into a humanoid robot. This is literally what figure one is going to do. And this thing has hands and legs and it can speak just like a normal human. Just one year ago, most people thought that these $20 AI apps were the final destination, as if we had actually arrived to the peak of AI. But turns out, these were just individual organs that are now coming together to finally build a fully functional AI body. It's almost like a human being. Now the interesting part is that if you scroll down to the bottom of OpenAI Sora website, you read a sentence that says, that Sora serves as a foundation for models that can understand and simulate the real world, a capability we believe will be an important milestone for achieving AGI. Which is so interesting. We are finally seeing all these parts coming together. Now the world is changing super fast without giving people any time to digest or even plan their careers. It's already very stressful to manage day-to-day -day work with everything that goes on in our own personal lives. And all of this AI stuff and layoff news just increases everyone's anxiety. But as I always say, there is no use in us panicking. We always have an option to evolve at times. The question is, how do we evolve and what do we focus on? See, if you're aware and ready to upskill, then you don't need to worry about AI replacing you. In fact, you will have maximum advantage because while everyone else panics, you will be ready to use AI as your co-pilot. But then it's very, very important to discuss the individual implications that all of these tech stacks would have. Because I know that the day Sora launches, the world of content will change forever. And I'm sure that every social media website will soon detect if a video is a deep fake or not. But what if it starts detecting real videos as deep fakes as well? Because if I take a real video and just tweak one second of it with AI, the algorithm will simply label the entire video as a fake video. Because there are two sensitive cases. Number one, fake videos looking real and not being detected. And number two, real videos being labeled as fake. Both of these cases are very scary. Therefore, social media not only needs to label a video as AI generated, but also mention the percentage of fakeness. Because I wouldn't want someone to take real videos of me doing something right and then label them as fake. All of these companies need to be extremely careful of releasing their tools during elections. Because with prompt engineering techniques, you can create a similar face structure of any big personality. Even if the tool bans all popular names, you can still create similar looking people and have them say whatever they want. Even in the real world, we have so many people who act like fake celebrities. Now these people are usually popular on reels and spoof videos because they have similar face structures. And you know how all of them use sunglasses and hats because if you hide someone's eyes, you can make imitation easy. Hence, AI tools should avoid generating similar face structures to celebrities as well. 
But now the challenge is where do you draw the line? Where is that soft balance of you allowing creative freedom, but also at the same time ensure safety? I don't have an answer to it, but it is a question which is very, very important to discuss. Right now, Sora is going through red teaming, which means that they are internally testing their app with artists and technical people. And the cost of generating AI videos right now is very high. But the goal of red teaming is to eventually test all the edge cases and eventually bring down the cost of making AI videos. Devon, Diagram, Creative, Framer AI, Galileo, UIZard, all of these tools are trying their level best to do the work of a beginner level designer or developer. For a very long time, beginners were getting placed and paid even if they knew basics of a software. So even if they did not understand the subject, they were being paid for just knowing a tool. But now the market is changing. Just how ChatGPT, DALI and Sora are coming together to create figure one, I'm pretty sure that all of these individual AI tools will one day fuse together to become an end-to-end -end builder of products. I'm pretty sure that a big tech company is going to selectively choose the companies that do the best job and put them all together, stitch them all together to make one single AI builder that will take care of everything you need to at least get a boilerplate version of your first product or your first MVP. See, I cannot tell you the business implications or the impact of these tech stacks on the real world because nobody can do that. And that is the truth. You can freak out or you can get excited, but nobody will know until unless these things are live. What we need to do as responsible students and professionals is to focus on making the right choices and spending time on the right things. And I believe that these nine skill sets will help you get maximum leverage. Number one, learn how to learn things fast. I personally feel that this is going to be the most valuable skill. I always share this meme in all of my workshops that uh, while humans are hooked, machines are learning. And it's very important that we reverse this cycle. We need to become good learners again. Because of all the comfort we have, because of all the abundance we have, we have stopped learning things. All of our focus has been directed to social media and we are losing our ability to learn things with full attention. If you're a student of science, you will relate to this, that till class 12th, you are taught physics, chemistry and maths. And just knowing physics, chemistry and maths will not help you get a job. You are paid to do engineering, which is combining physics, chemistry and maths together. And that is what happens in the real world as well. You're not paid for learning the tool. You are paid for using that tool to bring outcomes, right? Number two, take care of your physical and emotional well-being. In the next 10 years, just being healthy is going to be as valuable as having an expensive fancy degree. And I've made one video on this. It was one of our productivity series videos where I spoke about how do I take care of my energy levels. Number three, learn the basics of prompting, which means adding context and constraints to whatever AI tool that you're using. And we have a dedicated AI playlist just teaching this. Everything is available for free. All you need is time, energy, and the intent to upskill yourself. Number four, become outcome oriented and not output oriented. Now, let me explain you what that means. Most people, care about how much hours are they putting into something, how much hard work are they doing, and hard work, hours put in, the number of books you read, all of this is just outputs. These are vanity metrics. The world is now extremely obsessed with outcomes. You can study one night before an exam and get 90%, you will be considered a genius. But if you're spending three months studying for an exam and still not getting good enough marks, then you're very output driven and not outcome driven. Right. So everybody in the world is now asking what outcomes can you bring? That is why you would find so many people getting jobs without a fancy degree, without a fancy certification, because all of these were vanity metrics, right? A certificate or a degree or some tool knowledge will not come and bring outcomes. It is your own intelligence. It is your own ability to put things together, to engineer subjects that helps you get paid. Number five, become a T-shaped generalist and not just a specialist. What do I mean by that? If you look at a T, right, I want you to consider this vertical line as expertise in one single subject. So in my case, that was UX design or product design. And this advice is just for beginners. This is not for people who are 10 years ahead in their career. 
I'm talking about people who are maybe at three or four years of professional experience. So you're done with your college, you've chosen your degree, or maybe you're in school and you've chosen one single field. It is important to be good at one single field, have that vertical knowledge, but then you need some complementary skills as well. So when I was studying design, I also started exploring complementary fields like copywriting, basics of marketing, basics of communication, persuasion, good writing. And that allowed me to become a generalist. I started video editing, I started content creation, and it is not that difficult. I am not some extremely smart guy. It's just that whatever tips that I'm sharing with you right now, I have actually implemented them. I have actually applied everything that I have shared in this channel. I have got so many more opportunities in life simply because I was a generalist. And the thing with being a generalist is that you are able to find patterns in between things. So you become really good at pattern recognition. And that helps you spot opportunities before anybody else in the game. And that is the leverage that you have. Number six, if you are in the world of tech, and if you're just starting out in your career, choose intersections between design, development and management because the number of jobs that we'll have in this field will improve, assuming that you are a great prompter as well, assuming that you understand AI and you know more than what AI can give you. See, in any field, there are multiple levels of expertise. You start at level zero and then let's assume that the peak is level 10. A lot of people until now, were getting paid even if they were doing level two or level three kind of work. Moving forward, AI will already start at level three. So it is going to be your responsibility to first of all, validate whatever AI is giving you and then build on top of what AI has given you at level three. Now you cannot build on top of level three outputs until unless you have studied level four, level five and level six. When it comes to fields like sales, hiring and accounting, these will always stay relevant because they cut through domains. So I don't feel like sales and hiring and accounting are ever going to be automated by AI because number one, people buy from people. Number two, you need people to judge how good people are and accounting, some part of accounting will be outsourced, but you still need human beings to validate whatever AI is giving you. On number seven, learn how to write and speak clearly, specifically in English, because most of these AI tools are relying on English prompting. A lot of these tools will have voice enabled with them. Uh, but if you're not a good English speaker, you will have issues using the AI tools. And even if you freelance or go outside for opportunities, not knowing English will be a barrier. You need to learn the basics of charisma, the basics of persuasion. We have already created a free playlist that teaches you how to improve your English skills, your communication skills, your persuasion skills. Everything is freely available in the fix your life playlist. On number eight, understand that there's an arbitrage window for all of these skills. Now, what do I mean by that? Arbitrage means that there's a limited time frame in which you learn something and make money out of it. If you feel that just learning chat GPT or mid journey is going to help you get paid for the rest of your life, it is not going to happen. These skills come and go at this point, skills and softwares have become like YouTube videos, right? And I really like how Varun Maya talks about this. So Varun Maya is also a great AI creator. I'm pretty sure most of you know him and I learned this from him. I've learned so many things from him as well on this entire topic that your greatest skill today is to unlearn and learn again and just evolve. Right. So you learn a software, you make whatever money you want to make in three to four months and you just move on. And I keep telling people you need to learn what AI can and cannot do. But the truth is you can only know what AI can and cannot do for the next one quarter, because as you complete one quarter, the list of things that AI can and cannot do will change again. And on number nine, please be visible on LinkedIn and Twitter. I am not recommending you to open up your camera and start making reels and shorts and YouTube videos. No but at least start writing on LinkedIn and Twitter. I still don't get it. Why are people not writing on LinkedIn and Twitter? You need to follow the waterfall model. You watch a YouTube video, you make your notes on Notion, then you summarize them, put them on LinkedIn, you summarize them more and make a Twitter thread out of it. Build in public, learn in public. You don't have to be a creator, but you can be a curator. Literally just talk about what you're learning because this will help you write better, learn better, be accountable and be visible and find your tribe. Your ability to simplify difficult concepts or just being visible to the right kind of people will be extremely valuable. And these are some basic skills. I still don't understand why people are not making content. It's very, it's very strange how people are not writing on LinkedIn and Twitter because 
when you become active on these platforms number one you always stay updated so you enter the loop and then you know exactly what is happening that is how i keep myself updated people keep asking me ansh how do you stay updated i am just active on linkedin and twitter there's nothing more to it there's no rocket science to it so yes those were the nine things that i wanted to discuss we will have more videos on the apple vision pro very very soon i personally feel that that is again a very incredible feel and it's not going to be one of those generic review videos where i show you the dinosaur demo and all of that stuff no i personally feel that spatial design is a very exciting field and i've made a very cool video showcasing top 5 games that i have played on the apple vision pro i've just bought it and they are very very cool We will also be uploading our sessions from San Francisco, but I really want your support on this video as well. We've been working very, very hard, but majority of you, more than seventy percent of you, have still not subscribed to us. You've still not clicked on the bell icon. I humbly request you to please click on the bell icon. Please click on subscribe because that helps us tell YouTube that this content is worth spreading. That this video can help more people. Now before you close this video if you're confused about how to plan your career in 2024 here is a video that can help you get started we had created a lot of worksheets that will help you get more clarity as to what career you need to go in how do you plan your goals and how do you make the most of 2024